Hello friends, I welcome you all to the Dark Web Association YouTube channel. So far, we have built a good enough program that can take user input and, based on it, change the MAC address of the interface specified by the user to the MAC address they choose. However, what I don't like about it right now is that it looks a little messy and I think it could really use some refactoring. Therefore, I believe this is a great opportunity to introduce you to functions. Functions are used everywhere in programming, and we've actually used them in previous lectures without even realizing it. For example, when we used the input functions, they displayed whatever we entered on the screen and returned the user's input, which we then stored in a variable. A function is essentially a set of instructions that carry out a specific task. As we've seen, it can take an input. For example, the input or raw underscore input function takes a string as input and displays it on the screen. It can also return a value. In this case, it returns whatever the user enters using their keyboard. The reason we use functions is first and foremost to make our code look clean. We'll see how this works as we proceed. Functions also make our code reusable. For instance, in our code, we use the input function twice to ask for the interface and the MAC address. Without the function, we would have had to write the same code twice. Functions also make programming more abstract. For example, when we use the input function, we don't need to know how it works internally. We only know that we provided a string, it displays that string on the screen, and then it asks the user to input something. Once the user enters something, the function gives it back to us. The internal implementation is abstracted away from us. This concept is crucial, when programming. For example, in our program, we have a block of code that changes the MAC address. We know that this code works well. If we bundle it into a function, we can reuse it whenever we need to change the MAC address, even in larger programs we might write in the future. By simply calling this function, we won't need to rewrite the code. Additionally, we can bundle this function into a separate file, import it just like we import subprocess and call it whenever needed. This means that even if a year or five years later we want to use the code to change the MAC address, we won't have to rewrite or even remember how it works. We just call the function. Let's try bundling this code into a function and using it. To define a function, you type def followed by the function name. It's a good practice to use meaningful names. So let's call this function change underscore MAC. Following the name, you add parentheses and within these parentheses, specify the inputs for the function. For instance, to change the MAC address, we need an interface and a new MAC address. We'll call these interface and new underscore MAC. You can choose any valid variable names here, such as X and Y, as long as they make sense to you. Once the function name and its inputs are defined, end the line with a colon. Upon hitting enter, Python or PyCharm automatically indents the next line, signifying that everything written from this point will be part of the change underscore MAC function. Now, the goal of this function is to change the MAC address. Since we already have the instructions to do this, we'll cut and paste them into the function. It's important to ensure all code within the function has the same indentation to maintain proper syntax. Python uses indentation to separate blocks of code. That's it. We now have a function called change underscore MAC that takes an interface and a new MAC address as inputs. Whenever we call this function, it executes the instructions contained within it. If we don't call the function, nothing will happen. For example, if we run the script and don't call the function, the MAC address won't change. The function must be explicitly called. To call the function, we pass the required inputs, such as the interface and the new MAC address. Instead of storing the values of options, interface and options dot new underscore Mac in separate variables, we can directly use them as inputs when calling the function. This streamlines the code further. After implementing the function, if we run the same command as before, we'll see that the Mac address changes successfully. The function simplifies our code and makes it reusable. We no longer need to write those four lines of code every time we want to change the Mac address. We can simply call change underscore Mac with the required inputs, and it handles the rest. In the future, you'll also learn how to put this function in a separate file and call it from any Python program you write. This approach eliminates the need to worry about the underlying code every time, similar to how we use built-in functions like input, print. I hope this video has been informative.
I've shared a lot of practical tips, and I encourage you to explore more. If you're visiting this channel for the first time and enjoyed this content, please subscribe and turn on all notifications to stay updated on new videos. Thank you very much for watching the video till the end and for your valuable time.